Oh, would please join us for pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which will stand against one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. JD, could you offer us a word of prayer? Well, thanks for the warning. <laughs> Bow our heads. Uh, Lord, please be with us today. We have a very uh, heavy hearts and wondering what we can do to improve our counties. Please be with everyone in here making decisions. Please be with the ones that cannot be here. Please be with the ones uh, overseas fighting for the right that we have to sit here and make decisions. Yes. And uh, please be with the ones that uh, are ill and sick and cannot be here that wish to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, J.D. Susan, will you call the roll? <laughs> hey guys, if we need you to keep quiet. If you can't keep quiet, we're going to have to ask you to leave. Susan, will you call the roll, please? Judge Executive Todd Pollock. Here. Magistrate Chris Slider. Here. Magistrate Kenny Green. Here. Magistrate J.G. Jones. Here. Magistrate Kirby Melvin. Here. County Attorney Crystal Hines. Here. All right, uh, the first thing on the agenda is the second reading of Amending Ordinance 830.20. 830.20 was an ordinance entered into by fiscal court that repealed uh, several uh, solid waste ordinances. And it is the desire of fiscal court to readopt those ordinances, and to do that, we need to amend the ordinance that repealed the ordinances. Uh, so, Crystal, if I could, you have yours. Oh, and if I could ask you to read the summary. Oh, yeah, you can talk. Thank you, I appreciate it. You cannot talk. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> uh, now, therefore, be it ordained by the Fiscal Court of Trimble County, Kentucky, pursuant to Kentucky law and my glasses and the powers vested in the Fiscal Court, prior ordinance 830.9 and ordinance number 830.6 are hereby no longer omitted and now readopted as current law in Trimble County. Prior ordinance 830.9 solid waste ordinance and ordinance number 830.6 and ordinance relating to license for off-site waste management facilities shall carry the full weight to the extent of the law and shall be used in conjunction with solid waste ordinance 830.22. If a discrepancy shall occur or a contradiction, the most restrictive shall apply. The first reading of this ordinance was made and approved by unanimous vote of meeting of the Trimble County Fiscal Court on July 22nd, 26, 2019. Do I have a motion to adopt this ordinance? So moved. Thank you, Kirby. Second. Thank you, Kenny. And Susan, will you call the roll for the vote, please? Slider? Yes. District 2, Kenny Green? Yes. District 3, J.D. Jones? Yes. District 4, Kirby <coughs> Melman? Yes. Judge Executive, <coughs> Todd Polak? Yes. And I'll pass it down for your signature okay. on as well. All right, the uh, second item on the agenda is the second reading of readopting Ordinance 830.9. An ordinance to readopt prior ordinance number 830.9, the Trimble County Solid Waste Management Ordinance in Trimble County, Kentucky. Whereas the Trimble County Fiscal Court has the authority to readopt ordinances by exercise of its powers. And whereas the Fiscal Court deems it to be in the best interest of the citizens of the county that a readoption of the prior authorized ordinance of solid waste management shall be readopted by the Trimble County Fiscal Court in accordance with law. Now, therefore, <coughs> be it ordained by the Fiscal Court of Trimble County, Kentucky, pursuant to Kentucky law and the powers vested in the Fiscal Court, that the Trimble County Solid Waste Management Ordinance number 830.9 is hereby readopted. 
The purpose of this ordinance is to protect and maintain public health, safety, and general welfare within Trimble County. By readopting the Solid Waste Management Ordinance number 830.9, this ordinance shall become effective upon its passage and advertisement according to law. If any terms contradict between Ordinance number 830.9 and 830.22, the most restrictive rule, raw, uh, the most restrictive rule of law shall apply. Do I have a motion to accept this or second reading of this ordinance? So moved. Thank you, JD. A second. Thank you, Chris. And Susan, could you call the roll, please? District one, Chris Leiter. Yes. District two, Kenny Green. Yes. District three, JD Jones. Yes. District four, Kirby Melvin. Yes. Judge Executive Todd Polak. Yes. Uh, question please. We're not allowing for public comment in, on the agenda public today. Public commenting, I have a question. Can liquid waste be added? As okay, a I'm not. We're not taking any questions because I don't have it on the agenda for public comment or questions. I can get with your questions later, though. Okay, thank you. All right, now moving on the agenda to uh, the second reading of readopting ordinance number 830.6. An ordinance re to readopt prior ordinance number 830.6, an ordinance relating to license for off site waste management facilities in Trimble County, Kentucky. Whereas the Trimble County Fiscal Court has the authority to readopt ordinances by exercise of its powers, and whereas the Fiscal Court <coughs> deems it to be in the best interest of the citizens of the county that a readoption of prior authorized ordinance relating to license for off-site waste management facilities shall be adopted by the Trimble County Fiscal Court in accordance with law. Now therefore be it ordained by the Fiscal Court of Trimble County, Kentucky, <coughs> pursuant to Kentucky law and the powers vested in the Fiscal Court that the Trimble County ordinance relating to license for off-site waste management facilities ordinance number 830.6 is hereby readopted. The purpose of this ordinance is to protect, maintain public health, safety, and general welfare within Trimble County. By readopting the ordinance relating to license for off-site waste management facilities, number 830.6, this ordinance shall become effective upon its passage and advertisement according to law. If any terms contradict between ordinance number 830.9, 830.6, and 830.22, the most restrictive rule of law shall apply. The first reading of this ordinance was made and approved by unanimous mo vote at a meeting of the Trimble County Fiscal Court on July 26, 2019. Do I have a motion to adopt this ordinance? Motion to approve. <coughs> Thank you, Kenny. Do I have a second? <coughs> I second it. Thank you, JD. And Susan, will you call the roll? Mm -hmm. District 1, Chris Leiter. Yes. District 2, Kenny Green. Yes. District 3, J.D. Jones. Yes. District 4, Kirby Melvin. Yes. Judge Executive Todd Polak. Yes. All right, now the next item on the agenda is... Uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, table this next reading, the second reading of the ordinance 91001 and 92001, and I'd be glad to explain my reasoning if you'd like to hear it. I appreciate that, Kenny. Uh, we had a we have that we have that motion on the floor. Okay. Second. We got a second. And Crystal, is that is that a legal thing that I mean we we advertise to have the second reading? We advertise to have a second reading. You can table anything. Right. You can hold this off because um. I'm in agreement, Kenny. Uh, all right. We have a motion. We have a second to table the second reading of. The ordinance repealing ordinance 910.01 and 920.01. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. So, nay, you're opposed, right? Yes, I'm opposed. And I can tell you why. All right, well, let's have Kenny go ahead. Kenny. Okay. Now, we have hired an uh, environmental attorney to assist Crystal. And we had a two-hour meeting yesterday going over the current situation that we are in with the sludge facility, wanting to locate in the county. And when we made him aware of what was going on with the planning and zoning, that we was getting ready to have the second reading to repeal it, and he sat back in his seat in a minute and he said, so we've got 
a painting and zoning ordinance here, and we got two ordinances, solid waste ordinances, to fight this with. He said, if I was on the other side, I would have done exactly what they did, pull them permits, and sit back until you repealed planning and zoning, and then I'll take my chances on them two solid waste ordinances in court because there is a judgment against a solid waste ordinance on record. Now, we're still in the process of trying to review all this information. We got it late yesterday, right before the public meeting. And so I think we need time to look at that and also a chance to uh, talk to some other members about making some major changes in the planning and zoning ordinance, doing away with residential restrictions, doing away with the, the big restrictions that the farmers have, and it basically turning it into an industrial, a commercial business and an industrial zoning ordinance. So it wouldn't affect the residents or the farmers, it would just protect us from businesses like this coming in and it would give us a third layer. And if we can't get that done, and, and I've got assurances that we can, but if we come to an impasse, I'll be the first one to say we need to repeal planning and zoning, but I feel confident that we can come up with something that'll work. And that's my reasoning. Okay, J.D. Uh, I've been against planning and zoning. I'm still 100% against planning and zoning. I think it's not right for our county. I'm not going to fight you on this. If we need to step back and fight the bigger bear, let's fight the bigger bear for now. But I am not for planning and zoning. I, people think we are. If you all come up with a planning and zoning and you want me to take it back to District 3, I will. The District 3, there is some that want planning and zoning. There is more that does not. But I will go back and re-canvas every one of them. But uh, well right now, i got to say I'm, I'm not for planning and zoning. So I, I'm asking for the help of physical court yes. to, to get this to where it needs to be. Well, and just and to take a step back, I think, is what your motion is. And, and if we cannot get to take that a step point, back. then we, we know what's going to happen. So, yes. And I think that gives us time until our next fiscal court meeting on the 19th, uh, 10 days from now, to review those materials because I was looking at them too. Well, I looked at it too, and I read it, and, and this guy, this gentleman said that the solid waste ordinance should have held up. It didn't. And nobody can tell me how Henry County already has one in there five years ago. I've asked their people. They don't know. But it went through planning and zoning, and it's already there. Can they fight it? Even if we had, I do not believe planning and zoning is ironclad to keep him out. Planning and zoning says everything in its place. That means there's going to be a place here in Trimble County for that. Right. And we have to make a place for that. Right. Well, I have to take the direction of the environmental turning lens we hired. That's the one of this one? Nope. Okay. Oh. Uh, Roger. Ridley okay. Stockton. This is Tom Fitzgerald. He, okay. He's well respected by the one we hired. Yes, sir. And they're saying that we keep planning and zoning at some level. That And I will say that Ridley Stockholm, our attorney, did say make it for Trimble County. <coughs> make Trimble County zoning for Trimble County. And my biggest thing, I, if you've heard me talk, is protection. Protection, uh, did I think protection against the sludge farm? No, but yeah, I do now, it means one's come in here. We need protection for things that we don't even know it's gonna happen. Yeah. And there's things, people talk about the farmers. You know, we got section, I, I can't remember them all, but 770 relates to how you divide up your property yeah. to your kids. A big. Scratch it out and write down, refer to the subdivision regulations. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, that's fine. As long as we have something that gives us protection, gives us a level of zoning to where we can protect our property value in this county. Who's going to work on it? I'm volunteering. I'm asking okay. you to help on it. I mean, uh, you've got I things will. in there you don't like? Well, I, I do. Let's and, all get together and, and sit down, and, and here's what we need to do. I really don't like the, you know, the non-elected officials making the decision. Well, we so we, we, we got the final say right here. It? Well, what, we, if, we don't, because yeah. I asked... I asked Henry County, I said, when they turned down that last sludge farm, I said, did that make it to fiscal court? Well, we can make they it for Trimble no. County where we do. So, can we? Chelsea? I mean, well, 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 and the way that process would work, reads. J.D., is if, if, the, if the, the person applying for the, the conditional land use permit is denied, they would go to the Board of Adjustments. Please correct me if I'm wrong. And if the Board of, Just, of Adjustments would deny them, then their last resort would be to go to So school. it's up to them each time to come to us. Absolutely. So if they stopped and said, heck with it, I'm not doing That's it, right. they may never get to it. Then us. they would not. 
Yeah. That's that's exactly right. Well, but, and that's my issue. Go ahead. Go ahead. There's a, one thing that Reggie said was he recommended fiscal court actually come up with something to present basically to the committee yeah. to redraft. And we can, and correct me if I'm wrong because you're you're the planning and zoning attorney for a reason. Um, if, if the court wanted matters this big, like the sludge farm or any other kind of industrial um, company who tries to apply for either a conditional use or a variance, is it possible to get that issue before the fiscal court, before the committee even approves or denies? That would involve drafting a two-tier system, so if you if you would be applying for a variance for a residential purpose or an agriculture just for industrial or commercial <coughs> like a tactical business i uh, have to think about how you're going to apply a two-tiered standard for a zone change maybe I we can call the meeting with with fiscal court and we'll see in planning and zoning, or the planning and zoning committee and maybe Yes. Yeah, that's why I mean, I'm that's fine. I'm fine with that. As long as it's going to keep things such as a slug spawn out. And you know, there's going to be times that there, might, there could be some unruly business coming in that we don't have a solid waste yeah. ordinance we could even refer to. Correct. And honestly, special waste. Special waste, yes. I mean, so what? We need protection. We've got to have that protection. And I, and I can't imagine the Planning and Zoning Commission not. <laughs> seeking advice from us on, on, on a difficult situation where they say here's what's getting ready to happen you know give us some guidance so physical court has the last say so right if it gets to that level if it they gets appeal, to that level they appeal so we've much. got the last say so well, well, well they can take it to circuit court after well but what if the committee approves something and fiscal court is just to get we don't know anything That's they right. have the opportunity to no. yank the park do you say yes or no? I say, say yes. yes. No, yes. no, we Go wouldn't. Court. So if they they don't they don't want it to occur, but the committee said yes. We we don't really. We can only guide. We can't uh, vote. We can We don't have okay. the power that they do. We just put put out what we think, and they make the decisions. Perfect. Okay. Yes. No, actually, we don't. A, no, I think we there's don't. a difference. There are, there are two different things here. Um, for conditional use, it wouldn't automatically come to fiscal court for a conditional use for a zoning change or a text amendment. So if they're trying to put industrial waste on a farm, they need a zone change to get it to an industrial zone. That, but if that it's goes industrial. through <coughs> fiscal court. But if it's industrial. If it's in an industrial zone already, we don't have any that aren't already taken. Does that make sense? No. The, only, the only industrial zones now are um, as, as we propose are well the landfill the landfill the power plant and the substation so necessarily anything that comes in that wants to, an industrial purpose is going to have to come through the planning commission and goes up through fiscal court to approve the zone change and that's where we get our protection is that yeah. is that right okay right. I don't think we should ever have anything in conditional use then. Everything should be permit required only and have to go to a public fiscal court. Well, there's I mean, some things you, you could, like child care and things of that nature. I mean, you know, there's minor things. I don't think they have a lot, a lot of things. But there's a lot of things in that KRS 100 that. Right. The statute requires the, the dual. Right. The dual. It, it worries me that you have this living document that. Can be changed sure. without coming up in front of us. I mean, at any time for any purpose. We have you to approve all it. changes. We have to approve the changes. Well, if there, if there is a text amendment, if there's a text amendment, but then, not a conditional then they uses. would but they the would have to come to us and the say we approve this. Conditional uses are outlined in the text. <coughs> it worries me that there's a farm on every ridge in this county. It's going to go up for sale, and it's going to it's potentially have what we got had out here or still because we have that. or worse we never know what's coming in if you don't have some like i've said i'd rather have full coverage insurance than i would liability 
Then does maybe add an extra bullet, but that bullet may not work, and then what are we giving up? I'd rather have two bullets than one. According to the environmental <laughs> attorney, that is the best <coughs> best shot you've got of stopping something like this. I think it sounds like we can come together and come and up with something. That's exactly <coughs> where, where we're at. And we can also implement the, the everything we have, so we can implement the solid waste ordinances, which I think is wonderful, into the planning and zoning. Okay. You'll make something if I take it back, and I will go to every house. Don't you be a part of it? I, I definitely want to be a part of it. And I think that we need to make sure we have the committee of a uh, diverse group. We can't have 15 people in there that is retired and all four planning and zoning on the planning and zoning committee because right. you're only getting one view. Well, like I said, I like to have one out of every district on there. Do I have any in my district? Not, well, you're after it. Probably not. No. Nope. Probably not. Well, I'd like to quote Benjamin Franklin, who said, those who give up liberty for security deserve neither. And I stick with that. I believe it. Uh, but let's move on. Uh, so we, we vote on the table on the motion, or has it already been voted on? It's already on? been voted on. It's, it's, it's tabled. To table. To table. To table. Uh, the city of Bedford is looking to expand uh, and rehab their wastewater treatment facility. They have lift stations that uh, they do not make the pumps for anymore. And to rehab those lift stations, it's a very big expense. And they need to do some expansion outside the city limits. In order for them to get funding that could potentially save the city of Bedford $1.5 million, they need an ordinance that states that uh, it is a mandatory hookup if you're within 300 feet of a sewer line. So I've drafted this ordinance. It's very plain, Jane, and I, I looked off of Owen County and a couple other counties uh, on how they worded theirs. So it's very basic. Could I have a motion to have the first reading what, on this? Or do you have some questions? What would be the cost of, of the hook on fee? That's what I'm. Uh, as it stands right now, because of the, the low to moderate income people in the proposed uh, expansion area, there would be zero hookup. The city of Bedford would have to pay some of that. What about the land owners? What about the property that this is going to go through? They, the city would get easements. Well, I mean, they buy it from the land owner? Uh, easement going under? Yeah. Like a utility line? Yeah, just like a utility line. So there'll be zero cost to the to, for people to, to hook up to because the city would have to eat that because of the number of low to moderate income people and in, in would, that area. What would the monthly charge be? Sewer bill, thirty, forty dollars a month. Based on use or is that yep, it's based on it's Can based he, on how much water you use. There's, there had no there's the city's not gonna cover that expense. Is there anybody here for well, the city? Sorry. And, yeah. and Tammy and Will are here. The city's not gonna cover and you guys can speak about cut. that. It is about your right about now. your expansion project and uh, to be honest with you, we haven't came up with a cost of You guys haven't seen Clay Kelly's engineer plans? We didn't fit he just came and presented what we were going to do. He didn't give us written statements of how much we should charge residents if we shouldn't charge. Have you been in touch with Kipta? Have you all talked to Kipta? Personally no. No, not personally. They haven't been up. Only Clay. Okay. But, well, I mean, this is coming we, from Kipta. The, so there's there's, there's no guarantee that there's zero cost to the hookup. There's no guarantee. No, we haven't said that yet. I mean, oh, these guys are elected officials. That's why they're talking. I just had a comment on. You know. Uh, and so, in order for them to get this funding, though, and yeah, Kipta, can, basic, Kipta can tell you this. They, okay. they have the bottom have line is we're, we want to apply for a grant because the sewer system was pre-1980 and it's we're holding it together with a band-aid and it needs upgrades before we could even think about expansion and we don't have the money that it takes. So to apply for a grant, the county has to have an ordinance that says it requires mandatory hookup within 300 feet. So part of the grant would be covering the existing facility upgrades. Yes, absolutely. So I, they need this to move forward for their grant. Yes, this they is do. really for them. For them. That would help out the whole community. Yes, it would. Uh, 
infrastructure improvement is always great for the county and the city. Yeah. And it would, and there would be enough for future expansion. So we really haven't pinned down exactly what, to be honest, the cost of hookup. We didn't just, we haven't discussed in an official meeting. Well, I think the ordinance is eight eight hundred dollars currently, isn't it? Pardon me. The, the ordinance, the city ordinance right now, is eight hundred dollars for hookup tap on. Would it be? Would that would this grant cover that for the people who, due to the low to medium? No, the the city would have to pay that. Well, see, and we haven't went voted on that in a meeting yet. I think we ought to table this until we well, see. They, they've got to have this ordinance. Well, I don't want to go out there to somebody and they're going to have to be mandatory hooked up to right, it at a thousand dollars. No, they'll they'll work that out. Well, no, that don't, don't give me no insurance working that out. Well, well, that that's the problem. The ones is especially the, the ones that's just moved in out there. I know that the new new house is just built between Poppies and Purcell subdivision. You know, they spent $10,000 putting in a septic system two years ago, and then they're going to be required to hook on fee. You know, that's, that's a burden on them. Well, the, the conversations that I've had with the representatives from KIPTA, who's, who's working on the community development block grant, and they're working with the engineer to draw this uh, expansion and the rehab up, uh, the city would have to work something out with the beach. Well, can you all work, can right? you all do something before our next meeting? And, and yeah, yeah, we'll gather up all the information meeting. and, get and tell us and tell us what exactly. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. well, that suit everybody. Good. I'd like to make a motion that we have this first reading, just to get this first reading done. Then they'll have the second. They'll have all the information before By the, the second, second reading, and then the second reading. If we don't want to do it, we don't have to. Then. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. I make that motion to have the first reading. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Thank you, JD. And Susan, will you call the roll? But what will we have? The roll list. Will you put them on the agenda for our yep. August 19th meeting yep. to have for this some second information? Reading. Yep. Give their information before the second reading? Yep. We'll try to get it to you by email before then. There you so go. You can look at it before the meeting. And can you bring any information from KIPP that you've got? So I, that I thought that we'd, we'd have a representative here, but I don't see her. Well, that would be great if yeah. you had that representative here yeah. for the next meeting also. Yep. All right, Susan, you can call the roll. District 1, Chris Leiter. Yes. Kenny Green, District 2. No. District 3, J.D. Jones. Yes. District 4, Kirby Melvin? No. Uh, Judge Executive Todd Pollock? Yes. All right. Uh, motion passes. Uh, an ordinance of the Trimble County Fiscal Court authorizing a policy establishing the use of public sewers in Trimble County, Kentucky. Whereas the Trimble County Fiscal Court has authority to adopt <coughs> ordinances by exercise of its powers. And whereas the Trimble County Fiscal Court believes it to be in the best interest of the public's health, safety, and general welfare, as well as future land development in Trimble County to promote the use of public sewers within the county. And whereas the City of Milton and the City of Bed Bedford currently provide public sanitary wastewater collection for the households and the respective incorporated boundaries. Now therefore be it ordained by the Trimble County Fiscal Court that owners of all houses, buildings, or properties used for human occupancy, employment, recreation, or any other purpose situated in Trimble County, Kentucky, abutting any street, road, alley, or right-of-way in which there is located a public sanitary sewer line within 300 feet is hereby required to connect to the public sewer system. First reading of this ordinance was made and approved by Trimble County Fiscal Court by a 3-2 to two vote on 8-9-2019. And it will be advertised that the second reading will be held on August 19th, 2019 at our regular fiscal court meeting. The next uh, thing on the agenda, guys, is about applying for discretionary. At 9 o'clock. I'm sorry? At 9 o'clock. Yes, at 9 a.m. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, is about a, uh, applying for the discretionary funds on Cooper's Bottom Road. Earlier we had talked about this and the court didn't want to do discretionary funds. Uh, we've kicked it around. I've talked to uh, the magistrate in that area, Chris. Uh, I am all for applying for these discretionary funds. I would like to do that. What do you all think? Well, I'm, I'm out for the court. I don't know. 
Well, we, we need to, to move forward on that project. It's been dragging on yeah. now for, yeah. for how long? Yeah. And almost two years, I think. Yeah. 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 Almost two years. And, and I think, honestly, I think our guys can do it. We just need the money, though. And the discretionary money, we could get that money. Right. And I think it's it's a good time in election year. It's at, at state level. I think it's a good time to apply for it. Yeah. And uh, everybody else getting on, we, we should try as well. Chris, is that a motion to apply for this discretionary Yeah, money? I'll make a motion to apply for this Thank discretionary you. funds for the bottom. All right. Do we have a second? A second. Thank you, Kenny. Is there any more discussion on that? This was the like the FEMA work, right? Yeah. yeah. Can we this talk about applying, any of the other applying, ones in that FEMA area? Uh, no, just because okay. I didn't put, but we can, you know after a while we can. Okay. Um, the FEMA was a reimbursement program, this discretionary money is not. And the FEMA, the actual bid we had on it to come back, it was way off the wall. From sure was, was. Mm -hmm. sure was, and, and, and we'll I believe it. we can do it a whole lot cheaper. Yeah. I know we can still have to get the soil now, we've got about yeah, we need some engineers on it. Maybe it could be covered by this. And it would be. We'd add all those those costs, and, and I would I would ask for one or, well, you, because it's your district, to come work with me on this to get everything done. All right, we have a motion on the floor to, to go for the discretionary money, Do we, and we have a second. Any more discussion at all? All those in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Thank you. Show the motion carried. Last item on the agenda. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, JD. Second. Thank you, Chris. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, guys. Thank you all for attending and being patient with us.